The pain I had from my vaccine injury was the most excruciating pain I've ever had. This local woman is one of thousands of people severely injured by a shot. But her injury had nothing to do with what was inside the syringe. Hmm. The News 4 I team spent months tracking a growing number of people suffering painful injuries because of shots given incorrectly. Investigative reporter Jody Fleischer is here with what you need to know before you roll up your sleeve. Jody? Well, Wendy and Jim, no one knows if this spike is simply because more people are getting shots or if it's a difference in training for who's allowed to give shots in each state. But these kinds of injuries are so common now, a federal fund has paid out tens of millions of dollars to the victims. And we found they now make up half of all the new cases coming in. I think everybody should go get them. Ann Wyborski didn't think twice when her OBGYN suggested she get her flu shot back in 2013. She was nine months pregnant at the time. So they swabbed like the whole area. I didn't think anything of it. As soon as it went in, I said that's too high. By the time she got to her car, she struggled just to put on her seatbelt. She couldn't type on her keyboard at work or do anything around the house. It was a throbbing, constant pain. About a week later, she went into labor and gave birth to her baby boy. She had trouble nursing and even holding him. I realized there was a massive problem because I had just had major surgery and I was crying about the pain in my arm, not my C-section. Her doctor didn't know what it was, but Anne was suffering from Serva, shoulder injury related to vaccine administration. The person that administered the shot in the wrong spot is basically what happened. Renee Gentry runs the Vaccine Injury Law Clinic at George Washington University. She says Serva has become so common, it's now covered under the National Vaccine Injury Compensation Program, a $3.7 billion trust fund created and run by the federal government to take care of victims with catastrophic reactions. Vaccines have been an extraordinary contribution to society, but they're not magic. They are pharmaceuticals and anyone can react to them. To keep companies developing and producing vaccines, the government took on the liability back in the 80s, protecting vaccine makers and those who give shots from being sued. Instead, cases go through a special vaccine court inside the U.S. Court of Federal Claims. A 75 cent tax on every shot given funds the payouts. About 6,000 victims have received nearly $4 billion. It has good intentions and it means well. It's just not being implemented correctly. It took Martha Toomey more than a decade to get compensated after her son Jeffrey started having seizures within 24 hours of getting a vaccine. He ended up with a traumatic brain injury and a lifetime of health problems. There's a lot of words in the English language, but I can't think of anything that would describe that kind of hell. Hers is the kind of family the vaccine court was designed to help. But the program now has five times the number of cases it had in 2011. And Congress has never increased the number of judges allowed to hear them. The earliest available hearing date is in 2020. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services declined the I-team's request for an on-camera interview. But after a month of questioning, the agency finally acknowledged half of all the new cases filed in the court last year were not vaccine reactions. They were Serva. It's frustrating, I think, for everyone involved in it because it's preventable. And we discovered no one keeps data on how often Serva happens, where it's happening, or even which shot giver caused the injury. So they're never told to improve their technique, which Ann calls ridiculous. Once an injury happens, they need to follow up and make sure that that person doesn't continually injure more people. In a statement to the News 4i team, HHS admits it does not track or monitor this data, despite the info being filed in every vaccine court case. Somebody at HHS has to say, I'm going to take control of this and I'm going to fix it. The agency has asked for increased funding each year, but told us how it spends the money is a question for Congress. So we asked Maryland Senator Chris Van Hollen. Yes, Congress should look at this. He says the benefits of getting shots still far outweigh the risks, but this is definitely something federal agencies should be tracking. We need to collect the data because you can't make informed decisions uh, if you don't have the information to start with. Especially since the program has paid Serva patients more than $76 million while doing little to fight the problem. If you don't inform the people who are doing it wrong, um, they're not going to learn to do it right. Ann got paid for her pain and suffering, medical costs, and loss of wages. But she says no amount of money is worth what she went through. I spent over 18 months in excruciating pain. You can't get that back.
The agency wow. that oversees this program directed us to the CDC for what's being done to combat CERVA. Now, when we first asked the CDC in January, the agency told us there were no comprehensive studies, but it did have an education campaign on the correct way to give shots. Now it says the agencies will work together to review the CERVA claims in the vaccine injury compensation program. Mm -hmm. Well, those settlements are meant for victims with catastrophic reactions to vaccines. But in May, we showed you how half of all the new cases last year were these shoulder injuries, which can often be prevented with proper technique. And we found even if a shot giver injures several patients, the federal agency that runs the program never goes back and tells them it happened. And it like stretches and pulls and hurts in here. Bonnie Gambardella struggles to do basic chores. She still can't raise her arm all the way after getting a flu shot back in 2015. You can't sleep with it. You, you can't move it around. You, well, you want to, you, you try to, but it hurts so bad, you just, you, you can't do it. It's called CERVA, shoulder injury related to vaccine administration, and it's on the rise. It can happen to anyone, anywhere shots are given, a doctor's office, a workplace, even a local drugstore. It's because they put the injection in the wrong spot of my arm. Bonnie filed a claim with the National Vaccine Injury Compensation Program, a $3.7 billion federal fund to take care of patients with catastrophic reactions. About 6,000 victims have received nearly $4 billion so far. The News 4i team found more than 76 million of that has been for shoulder injuries like Bonnie's. It happens more than you would expect. Paul Brazil's law firm specializes in vaccine court cases, and he says two-thirds of his entire practice is now Serva. It can go wrong a lot of ways, and that's part of the challenge. It usually happens when a shot is given too high on the arm or if the needle is too long for a small-framed patient. He's even seen a husband and wife who got the shot together both get injured or multiple co-workers from the same office. When you see more than one person suffer an injury on the same day from the same person, yeah, that would indicate that it was probably an improper technique. And the I-team discovered no one keeps data on how often CERVA happens, where it's happening, or even which shot givers cause the injuries. The vaccine administrators are isolated from this. They're not a party to it. The vaccine court is a no-fault, no-blame system which protects vaccine makers and those who give shots from being sued. And they don't even pay for the program. You do, with a 75-cent tax on every shot you get. You know, if they were the ones being sued, they would be very cognizant of the fact that they may have caused a, a serious shoulder injury. They don't hear about it, so how would they know that they did something wrong? The Health Resources and Services Administration declined the I-team's request for an interview, but sent a statement citing a confidentiality provision, which the agency says prevents the release of information to someone who is not a party to the proceeding, absent express written consent. But Brazil says in every case, the patient already consents to contacting the shot givers. You notify the place that administered the vaccine because you have to get the records. So they know something is going on. He says it shouldn't be that hard for the government to also alert them that it's Serva and request retraining. Just doing that could go a long way. I think most people, if they were made aware of it, they would want to improve. Bonnie says her shoulder will never get better. And while she appreciates the settlement that's coming, she hopes the program will evolve and help prevent CERVA instead of just paying claims. How are you going to solve somebody getting a bad flu shot if you don't inform them that they did it wrong? The attorney told me even a form letter that doesn't identify the patient's name would be helpful, or they could all retrain on the proper technique every year. He said that would also help in cases where the records only show where the shot was given and not who actually gave it.